Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and this is question number nine now from the paper two, uh, variant one from May, June 2020 from the International GCSE from Cambridge. <clears throat> it says, factorize completely the expression 21a squared plus 28ab. So factorizing completely, we've got to take out all the common factors. So we look for the highest common factor of these terms. Okay, now, if you look at the numbers, the highest common factor of 21 and 28 is going to be 7. 7 is the largest number that goes into 21 and 28. Okay, 7 times 3 is 21, 7 times 4 is 28. That's the largest factor. If you, look, if you wrote down the factors of 21, you have 21 times 2, and you have 7 times 3. Those are the only factors of 21. And for 28, you have 28 times 1, you have 14 times 2, Something times 3, no. Something times 4, yes. 7 times 4. <coughs> Those are the only factors of 28. And you can see 7 is the highest common factor. So I'm going to write 7. Write that outside the bracket. And then if we look at the letters, you have here a, a squared and A. So you've got A squared, which is like A times A times B. And in this one, you have A times B. What's common? Well, just one of those A's is common. Okay, so so when you have two letters with the same the same letter, okay, that's like in both terms, you choose the one with the lower power as the highest common factor because that's what's common. The B is not common, so now we open our bracket. We say, okay, what do I have to multiply 7a by to get 21a squared? Well, 7 has to be multiplied by 3, and a has to be multiplied by a. That's going to give me 21a squared. And then what do I have to multiply 7a by to give me plus 28ab? Well, it must be positive, and it must be 4 there, 7, sorry, uh, 7, 4, yeah, 7, 4 is a 28. And <coughs> when I multiply a 7a by 4, I want to get 28b. I need a b there as well. So there we have the factorized form, completely factorized, taking out all the common factors, the highest factors from the letters and the numbers. Okay, we can also think of it like this if you want to. There's one another way of doing this, which is by using some sort of a um, visual method where we have these blocks representing these areas of, um, you know, these numbers are the areas of these blocks. So, the, okay, what's common? Well, it's the same kind of thing. This, what's common here? Well, that's 7 and A. What do I have to multiply 7A by to give me this? It's going to be 3a, and what do I have to multiply 7a by to give me this? Well, it's going to be 4b. So these are your factors, 7a times 3a plus b gives me this. That's another way, visual way of doing it. And here we have, for part b, we have a difference of <coughs> two squares. Okay, but that's what you think in the beginning it might be, but in fact, <coughs> on first sight, it doesn't look like that. You have x squared, you have y squared. But 20 and 45 are not perfect squares. So this is not actually a difference of two squares the way it looks right now. However, we can factorize it in another way. We can take out the common factor of 5. 5 is common to 20 and 45. So if I take, <laughs> take out that common factor, I'm left with 4x squared minus 9y squared. In any type, <coughs> type of factorizing, the first thing you must always do is take out the highest common factor. Right, even if it was a difference of squares, but there was a factor, you would take that out first and then deal with the um, difference of squares, as you'll see. So now, once we've done that, a lot of students would then think we've finished. Oh, I've taken out the factor, and they would write this as the answer, losing marks, because it's not fully factorized. This is now a difference between two squares. Now, a difference between two squares will always factorize into two separate brackets, one of them has a plus in it, one has a minus. It doesn't matter which way you put the plus or minus. No problem. I prefer to do the plus first and then the minus. And then we write down the square root of each of these terms in the spaces. So we've got 4x squared, which is 2x. The square root is 2x. 9y squared, the square root is 3y. So you put 2x and 3y in these spaces here on both brackets. That will give you, if you expand it, 4x squared, and you'll have minus 6xy plus 6xy. Middle term will be gone, it can become 0. And then 3y times minus 3y is minus 9y squared. That's the difference between two squares. 
So this is the final answer in its proper form. So you have to be careful not to forget to do the di <laughs> difference of squares at the end. So initially, it doesn't look like a difference of squares because 20 and 45 are not perfect square numbers. However, you take out 5 as common, then you find there is you know, a difference of squares inside that bracket, which then can further factorize. And there's the answer to part 3. Uh, sorry, part question 9, part B. <coughs> and as I said, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear somewhere in this region here. And other questions from the topic of um, algebra and factorizing will be found in the playlist that should appear in this area. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.